Hey guys, King Gath here with another patch for Sim Settlements 2. This is patch 1.0.5, which I'm calling End of the Conga Line. And that is because we have finally addressed the issue with unique NPCs piling up in a little squad at the uh, edge of your settlements, usually in Sanctuary for many of you. And uh, we'll talk about more how, how that works and what we changed to get to where we are. But first, got to thank some patrons. So as I have said at the beginning of almost every video for the past like five months, uh, our Patreon has been blowing up. Thank you guys so much. And I want to give a shout out to some of the people who have joined recently. So a big shout out to Roman Day. Angie Zimajewski, Michael Ficus, Derek Chafin, Vita, Digi Demon Lord, Jack Chase, Deborah Hughes, John, Carrie Beckwith, Whisperfire, Richard Schwander, and Joshua C. Chad. Thank you all for joining up the Patreon and uh, helping us make this project bigger and bigger. And for those of you guys uh, who joined up recently and I didn't call your name out, don't worry, I will get to you eventually. I'm trying to uh, stage them out so that uh, the video doesn't just get progressively longer as more people sign up. All right, on to the patch notes. So this conga line we're talking about, many of you guys have experienced it. You'll have a line of these unique NPCs just waiting for you to go address them. And then often they'll have a little conversation or they'll have a quest for you and you've probably become used to it. And it's really unimmersive and it wasn't how we intended to ship that system. That was actually put in there for the alpha testers so they could quickly test the various NPCs. And due to just time constraints, I was never able to get them working the exact way I wanted. So this patch was dedicated to fixing that mistake and getting those into the state that I always envisioned them. So the idea behind the unique NPCs was two things. One is it was a great reward in settlements. It was a great way to get some immersion. Uh, you got to have some unique person rather than just the generic named settler, which feels really good. It's always cool to have some new quests, even if some of them are really simple little fetch quests or whatnot. It's just nice to have people in your settlement that you have a little backstory on as opposed to, again, the same 12 voices that are all named Settler. Even if you've got a mod renaming them, they still just feel really lame compared to some of the vanilla characters you could recruit like Sheffield or the uh, the Vault Tech Salesman, etc. So we wanted to have a lot more of those. So that was obviously one point of them. And then the other side of that was a mechanical benefit. So as you recruit these guys and you see that their stats are much higher by default, if you went through the main quest and got access to the Vitamatic, then you could quickly figure out that that was a huge boon to you because it would boost the production of the plot that they worked and then it would make it more easier for them to get to the level or they might have already started the level to use some of the advanced building classes that require higher stats to even assi be assigned to so they were simultaneously a reward from an immersive standpoint as a rpg lover and then a reward for people who care about the gameplay mechanics and as such we wanted them to be immersively introduced to you and we wanted them to be kind of trickled out as a reward so that they felt like you earned them so that it was a direct result of your building and your investing in settlements that caused them to come to you as opposed to how it was shipped with which is just like just randomly over time they all pile up in little clumps uh, and if you focused on one settlement they would all show up in that one settlement in a big giant clump and it felt really really ridiculous I've seen many people call it the conga line which is why I named the patch as I did and it does look bad and so I fixed all that and now I want to tell you about what I did now there's a lot more to this patch beyond what I'm about to talk about but I'm going to prattle on for this for six or seven minutes so so if you're looking for all the specific patch notes, looking to check if a bug was fixed, go check those out. We've got that linked below with a full text description of those. Um, there's some new art assets, some new sound assets, uh, a bunch of bug fixes, stuff like that. But we're going to focus on this NPC change because it'll be a big one for any of you starting a new character. So that's the first thing to talk about is that some of these changes will apply to all of you, but uh, some of them will only matter if you're starting a new character after this. And so rather than the NPCs just automatically appearing in clumps over time, now instead they are tied to one of two events. One is that uh, once you naturally start receiving visitors, you will have the option to get some of these unique NPCs. So for those of you who have played a lot of SS1, you know all about the visitor system, but I'll go over it anyway for anybody who's new through SS2 or uh, maybe who didn't uh, catch on to this in SS1. As you develop more commercial and recreational properties, uh, which or plots rather, which uh, cause or give your people things to do and spend their money on, 
you draw in visitors. And these would be NPCs outside of your settlers. And all they do is just hang out and add some life to your settlement. In the background, they also do uh, boost your settlement income. So now there's a direct correlation there. You have the little caps meter on the right of your screen um, that that will get boosted a little bit on that day when those people are around. But mostly it was designed for flavor. It was the idea of that once you had a a large growing city, you wouldn't just have residents, you would also have people coming through who are just passing by and your settlement would start to feel like an actual hub, like it's an actual, like a Bunker Hill or a Diamond City. And that was kind of the design idea behind the visitor system. So now, as soon as you're eligible to get your first visitor, you're also eligible to start receiving your first unique NPCs. So that means that you'll actually have to develop out a decent settlement and you won't come back from doing the first quest with uh, Jake and all of a sudden there's a brand new unique NPC. That was never intended to happen. It was supposed to feel like you earned it because you actually committed yourself to the settlement system. And so we've, we've rectified that situation. So if for some reason you don't get to that point um, for, you know, do, you know, you like to design much smaller settlements or whatever, we've done a couple of other ways you can get access to them. Another point we've changed in this is that it's not just recreational and commercial that drive visitors. Now, those two just get a substantial boost to it. So you could get visitors with far less commercial and recreational plots than you would need of the other types. So you can still build focused settlements on the things you want. So if you want to just build a total farming community, you're not interested in having a bunch of farms and recreational plots around, that's totally okay. And you still will have the ability to get visitors. It will just take a little bit longer. You'll have to have higher level plots and a little bit more of them of the other types. But I think that also makes it feel more immersive because you wouldn't want a bustling city feel in those settlements. You're only, If you want the bustling city feel, you're gonna have a lot of shops and things like that. So uh, this was done not only to make it feel more immersive but also uh make the uh make tie this in the gameplay mechanics in a way that makes sense because they're driving uh, your income and that generally is driven off of your commercial now we did recreational as well because the recreational tend to be a lot of the building plans people design tend to be like interesting activities and stuff there's some that do uh, like shooting ranges and uh, uh little games that i've seen that some people have added in their add-on packs and stuff like that. So that too would naturally be a draw for uh, people in the Commonwealth to come visit. So we wanted to make sure that that was covered as well, but primarily commercial was the original design uh, purpose of that. And so it feels immersive and provides the benefit if that's the type of settlement you wanna design, but we don't wanna stop you from getting access to these unique NPCs just because you happen to not go crazy on commercial and all your settlements, because we don't want that either. We want you to be able to build the exact settlement that you want to, and then make sure that through the caravan network, you can solve all the different needs and whatnot so that you're not forced to design every settlement to look exactly the same. That would be really, really boring. So the other third way we have for you to get access to them is as soon as you finish the uh, the Ron, if you're not familiar with the Ron, is from one of our characters in our main quest. At some point after you meet him, he gives you a couple of miscellaneous objectives. And if you go complete those two miscellaneous objectives, you get a pop-up that tells you about a service the Ron offers. And this is a pretty important service in the mod once uh, we talk about the rest of these features. But uh, after that point, once you get that pop-up, that also unlocks the possibility for uniques to start showing up. So there's uh, plenty of opportunities to get access to these. You don't have to do anything. And if you're starting a new character, I just wanted you to be aware of those changes because it, you might think that something's broke it, excuse me, if you didn't get uh, someone like Karne Asad showing up immediately as he was apt to do in the old design. So it might just take, you might just have to invest a little more time in your settlements before he and his friends start showing up over time. So the other thing that I did that was big in this department, and this is one of the things where I gave up on it due to time constraints, is I, f I finally came up with the AI package I've been dreaming of for this. So I had a system in mind. I couldn't quite get it working, but I finally figured it out. Um, and so when these unique NPCs appear in the world, they will pick up to three settlements that you control that match what they are after in life. So for example, there's a character named Odette who uh, wants to find a farm. So she will pick three of your settlements that have a fair number of agricultural plots. Um, there are, and there are different characters with different types that match plots. Some of them are looking for a certain happiness level. Um, others are just looking to see that you completed some sort of main game quest. There's different ties. Every character has their little thing that they're looking for. Um, and uh, if they find settlements that match what they're looking for, they will put them in their AI package and they will start hanging out with the, at each of those settlements a couple days a week and they will sandbox around that settlement. They aren't going to stand around in the conga line anymore. They'll actually act like normal visitors. So they will go use your commercial plots. They'll hang out at the bar. 
They'll go uh, train on your uh, on your recreational plots, things like that. So the unique NPCs now will be traveling around the world. They'll actually walk from settlement to settlement, so you could stumble upon them on your way from one settlement to another, and they will tend to follow the roads. So if you're wandering around, if you're a survival player who doesn't fast travel, you will very likely just run into some of these on their path between settlements. Now, for those of you guys who fast travel everywhere, it could become very difficult to actually find them. So I have two ways that we're resolving that. One is that whenever you arrive in a settlement, a, uh, a little background roll is done to determine if you if today's the day you're gonna meet a unique NPC. And if so, it will teleport one of them to the settlement before you get there and randomly stick them in an animation marker. So you have a chance to just run into them just in your normal visits to your settlements. And then the second way, for those of you guys who just wanna guarantee you can collect them all is through the Ron. The Ron has a recruitment service he offers where you pay him some number of caps and he'll tell you where one of them is and give you a map marker so you can go track them down. And uh, if for those of you uh, who are thinking, hey, some of that, that sometimes gets buggy, uh, I address some of those issues as well. So again, go read the full patch notes to go see all that. But this patch was all about, for my personal effort, some of the other team members did some cool stuff too. But my personal effort on this was all about uh, making sure that this unique NPC system got the attention it deserved and that played out how we wanted it. We wanted it to feel very immersive. We wanted it to feel like a reward uh, that uh, was allow or encouraging you to engage in settlement gameplay and giving you something appropriate in response so that the the game feels like it's reacting to what you're doing and more than just building the buildings but now you actually have people out in the world showing up because of your actions and that uh, is what we're going for so i'd love to know how we did definitely uh, give some feedback after you get a chance to play play with it and uh, see if you like it hate it whatever uh, I, and that leads us nicely into uh, our t-shirt giveaway so every patch day i like to give away a t-shirt and the way we do this is I'm going to give you guys a hashtag to include with a comment, but alongside that comment, or I'm sorry, alongside a comment, not just the hashtag, please include something else. So, uh, you know, it could be your thoughts on this new system. It could be something you love about some settlements. It could be a funny story you had about something that happened to you in Fallout, whatever, just something to keep the post interesting so that I'm not just getting spammed with a bunch of comments with this hashtag. So this week's hashtag will go with uh, hashtag the Ron because uh, he is uh, kind of instrumental here. He's a, he's a big point of service. He offers a chance for you to uh, open it, open up this uh, this process quickly and to get access to these characters quickly if, if you're not into the whole immersive thing and you're just looking to check off that list and get as many quests done as possible. So hashtag the Ron. And uh, I will pick one of your names on uh, Monday, probably Sunday or Monday, and I will comment on your comment. If you get back to me in about 24 hours, I will hook you up with a t-shirt, some settlement t-shirt. All right, guys, all that said, take care and enjoy the mods.